At this point, I was taking about up to eight a day. This is back in 2008. Daryl Gebbian represents the ravages of opioids. An injury led to an addiction to Percocet and fentanyl. It destroyed his marriage, derailed his career as a doctor, and eventually landed him in jail. Life for me at that time was a nightmare. I mean, I, I, mean, I remember clearly, still right now, looking in the mirror, I hated myself. You know, pictures of me. He's slowly getting back on his feet. He's also the lead plaintiff in a billion dollar class action against dozens of pharmaceutical companies and their distributors. What's happening with the opioid crisis is a symptom of a much bigger problem at the societal level that we are not coping with stress well. The opioid crisis has ravaged the state of Oklahoma. Gebbian and his lawyers are emboldened by the Oklahoma decision. Oklahoma successfully argued that Johnson & Johnson created a public nuisance, contributing to an ongoing public health crisis by engaging in misleading marketing of its drugs. In Canada, between 2016 and 2018, there were more than 11,000 opioid-related deaths. BC is engaged in a class action against a number of pharmaceutical companies. I think it would have been um, uh, a more difficult situation had the, the court in Oklahoma said, you know, we don't see any liability here. But to have a judge say, yes, we do see that there's a serious problem here uh, with how this company uh, conducted themselves. BC lawyer Radar Mogamar is also involved in the province's case. He says in Canada there's no public nuisance statute, but there are similar rules around making false representations. The industry has to get its head around the fact that we're all coming for them because of their conduct and that the taxpayers can't be left holding the bag on this crisis. Mogamar says a victory for BC would be good news for all of the provinces and territories contemplating similar lawsuits. Jamie Strachan, CBC News, Toronto.